Hello students, today we are going to study chapter 5 of your science book Fundamental Unit of Life. I am Mrs. Indira Chaudhary, PGT Biology from Kendri Vidyalaya Vehicle Factory, Jabalpur. In this chapter, we are going to study the fundamental unit of life. When we say life, we are referring to the living organisms. You see around yourself, they are, they can be insects, they can be animals, they can be plants which you see, but there are some organisms which you cannot see like these microorganisms. So the insects or the animals, the plants or microorganisms, all of these are life forms. When we are studying about life, we are studying the branch of science that is biology. Bios means life and logos means study. Bios is a Greek term. This branch of science biology deals with life and this biology has many branches. One of the branches of biology is cytology. Cyto means cell and logos means study. So we are going to study about cell in this chapter which you have studied in your previous classes. Look at this person. Can you recognize him? He is a famous English scientist who gave a law of physics and he gave he made a very important discovery in the history of science. Yes, you recognize him correctly. He is Robert Hooke and he made an important discovery in 1665. How many years ago? Yes, exactly. It is 355 years ago. What was this discovery made by Robert Hooke? Let us see. He observed Robert Hooke in 1665. He observed a piece of cork. He took a bark piece. He took out a small piece of bark from here. This bark piece when it is dried it is called cork. So what he did that's from this bark he made very thin slices. Just very thin slices and then he observed them under the self-made microscope. This was the microscope made by him. And in this primitive microscope, whatever he saw was this pattern. He observed it very carefully. He described it and actually it was a discovery by chance. When he saw these, he said something is uh, looking like small compartments. They are polygonal in shape. So he described about his discovery in his book called Micrographia. Micrographia is the book written by uh, Robert Hooke. And in this book, he wrote minute bodies. What did he exactly see was a honeycomb-like pattern. Honeycomb, uh, you might have seen. Yes, the honeybees, they store honey in this honeycomb. So, Robert Hooke just um, simil uh, he, uh, felt that this honeycomb is the structure which is just similar to that structure of the cork. He called this structure as cell. He named this structure as cell. And the reason behind this was that cell is actually derived from Latin word and that is cella. He actually used the term cellulae which was later given a short form as cell. So this cellulae or cella is a Latin word which means a small closed room. So actually when Robert Hooke was referring, he did not know that it was something like part of living organism. He said that this structure is like a small closed room and he termed it cell. After his discoveries, series of scientists started making experiments and what their observations are in, marked in the history of science. Robert Hooke, after Robert Hooke, Anton van Leeuwenhoek from Denmark found the presence of living organisms in pond water. He also made a very good microscope. Robert Brown in 1831, he observed the cells and when he saw the cells, he saw that the cells have some dense structure. 
the cells when he observed he saw inside the cell there is a dense structure he called this dense structure as nucleus so the discovery of nucleus was made by robert brown perkins in 1839 he described that the inner part the inner part of the cell is protoplasm whatever is present inside the covering plasma membrane or cell wall was protoplasm in 1838 and 1839 when many slides were made many organisms were seen and uh, all of them came to a conclusion that all our organisms are made up of cell so this was presented as cell theory by schleiden and schwann so they proposed the cell theory that all organisms are actually made up of cells varsho in 1855 suggested that new cells they come from pre existing cells which cells were already present they can give rise to a new cell how can we see the cell of course we can also see the cell we can take a piece of onion from your kitchen you can take out a very thin small peel from that onion and you can stain it put it on a cover slide put put it on a slide sorry and then observe it under yes how will you observe it we need a microscope which microscope it is compound microscope why do we call it a compound microscope compound means more than one so what is more than one here this this part it contains a lens that is called the eyepiece lens so this is first lens then another lens which is present is here this is the objective lens so this is lens number 2 so it has two lenses eyepiece lens and objective lens so we call it a compound microscope this compound microscope requires a source of light light energy you keep it near light so that the light can enter the mirror and the mirror can reflect the light to the slide and slide is visible in the objective so we can see this in a compound microscope this is only theory we actually need to do practicals with all these things so let us see how can we do it practically this is the lockdown period you cannot go to schools so let us move to a virtual lab I am taking you to Amrita Virtual Lab, onion. which is going to show. And remove leaves from the onion peels. Remove a piece of transparent onion peel with the forceps. Put the epidermis into a watch glass containing distilled water. Take some saffron in solution using a dropper. Put a few drops of saffron in solution into another watch glass. Using a brush, transfer the peel into the watch glass containing saffron in solution. Keep the epidermis for 30 seconds in saffron in solution so the peel can become stained. Take the peel from the saffron in solution using the brush and put it in the watch glass containing distilled water. Using a dropper, take some glycerin and put 2 to 3 drops of glycerin in the middle of a dry glass slide. Transfer the peel to the slide containing glycerin using the brush. Take a cover slip and place it gently on the peel with the help of a needle. Remove the extra glycerin using a blotting paper. Take the glass slide and place it under the compound microscope. View the slide under the compound microscope. What do you view? You'll see a structure of this onion peel. This is the structure of the onion peel. the cells are polygonal you can draw these polygonal cells and inside they have a dense nucleus this light colored is the cytoplasm this is the cytoplasm and this is the cell wall so this is a typical onion peel if you stain it in methylene blue the cells visible are blue in color but if you stain it in saffron in the cells which you see will be red in color so this experiment is to be performed by you as a practical when you go back to your labs take the onion and make this onion peel 
Now, if you take a small onion, if you take a small onion, okay, and some of you take big onion, some of you take a colored one, some of you take a white one, then you cut it and take out a peel. Observe it under the microscope. Will you see any difference in the structure? No, actually all these onion will show this type of peel. So, the onion is made up of these types of cells. These cells are found in all these onions. So, onion has this unit cell in it. Such slides can be made for, we can use either a leaf, we can use a leaf or we can use root, you can use fruit or you can use a flower, whatever slide you want to make, you can make it and you will finally see that they contain cells. So, we come to a conclusion that all cells, uh, all sorry, organisms around us are made up of cells. So, we have come to a conclusion which was discovered 250 years ago by a pair of scientists. Do you remember who are they? Yes, this is the cell theory given by Schleiden and Schwann. Schleiden and Schwann in which year? Yes, try to remember in which year? It is 1838 and in 1839. They proposed the cell theory. But when we say cell, so cell makes organisms, but a cell can make organisms single celled that is also living like amoeba. Amoeba is also a living organism. Cell makes an organism, so can a single cell make a complete organism? Yes, like amoeba. This is single celled organism, paramecium. Euglena, a single cell makes a whole organism. So, these are unicellular organisms. Uni means one, cellular means of cell. Then, organisms like plants, animals, they are multicellular, many celled. So, unit of this amoeba is also a cell and unit of these animals and plants is also a cell. Just like and compare it to the house that this house has what? This house is a wall. What are the walls in the You can see these two walls and the So just like the house is made up of bricks, similarly an organism is made up of units called cells. A cell can perform all the basic functions just a living organism can. What can a living organism do? What are the functions living organisms can perform? Yes, it needs nutrition. Then what else? Ah, it needs respiration, it requires oxygen and for uh, oxidation of glucose. Then what else? Ah, it is growth. Living organism can grow and living organisms can reproduce. So, all these functions, a cell also need nutrition, a cell also need respiration, a cell can also grow, a cell can also reproduce. So, this can be done by cell as well as the complete organism. So, we can come to a conclusion that these functions can be performed by a cell as a unit and a complete organism as a unit. So, let us define a cell. We define a cell as structural and functional unit of life. Basically, the structure of organism has fundamental unit as cell. So, it is the structural unit and functions as we have seen just now. So, we see that cell is the structural and functional unit of life. If you observe a 
leaf, you'll observe structures like this. These are the cells. This shape of cell is different. If we see cells of human body, the blood cells, they have a different shape. The brain cells, they have a different shape. So, here we see a difference that all the cells are not alike. They are different. So, if we can say that there are different shapes. This is the nerve cell. Where we find the nerve cell? Yes, we find it in brain. Then these are reproductive cells, the sperm and the ovum. This is the muscle cell which you find in the digestive system. This is the blood cell. Fat cell you find beneath your skin. And this is the bone cell. Of course, the bones are hard, but they are made for cells. So every part of human body is made for cells. They may have different shapes according to their functions. So the shape can vary according to the function or the location of the cell. Let us see the size of a cell. We can measure the cell and uh, we can measure it usually in microns. Micron is represented by mu and this means 10 to the power minus 6 meters. So, the cells, they may vary from 1 micron to 100 microns, especially the microscopic ranges, 1 micron to 100 micron. The viruses, they are very small. They are just smaller than this size. We see them in nanometers. So, they can be seen only in the electron microscope. But we use a light microscope as we have seen in our lab. It is the smallest cell that is mycoplasma. The common name for mycoplasma is P P L O, pleuro pneumonia like organism. And the largest cell, yes, of course, it will be an egg cell. But which egg do you eat? This or this? This is this one is what we eat. So this is the common egg of a chicken. But this egg is the egg of ostrich. So, this is the largest cell in the world. Both of them are microscopic, but both of them are single cells. Now, let us see the details of the cell. The cell contains three basic features. One is plasma membrane, which surrounds the cell. Second is the dense part, nucleus. And third is the gelatinous material filled inside the cell that is the cytoplasm. Let us deal with them one by one. First of all, we will see the details of what the cells have. This is a plasma membrane. This is a cytoplasm. This is a nucleus. Let us see plant cell or animal cell. This is the plasma membrane. This is the plasma membrane. And this part is the cytoplasm. This also has a cytoplasm and this is the nucleus. This also has a complete nucleus. So, this is the vital part and plasma membrane. The rest of the organelles we study in this chapter in the details. Plasma membrane. You can give another name to the plasma membrane. You can call it a cell membrane also or you can call it a unit membrane also. If you find some written plasma membrane, cell membrane, unit membrane anywhere, all would be referred to the outermost organ of the cell which surround the protoplasm. Whatever is the living matter inside the cell is called the protoplasm uh, and plasma membrane is found in plant cell, animal cell as well as the bacterial cell. Let us see the details of the plasma membrane. This is an electron micrograph. Electron microscope can magnify 1 lakh times. So, this structure is visible under an electron microscope. You can see it is not uh, straight. It is a bit wavy. Why do we draw this? Because this plasma membrane is flexible. It is flexible because of the presence of structures called lipids. These are special types of lipids called phospholipids. So, the plasma membrane is made up of phospholipids and these structures which you see 
they are proteins so these are the proteins so this plasma membrane has a structure of lipid bilayer and proteins scattered in this sea of lipids and it makes a flexible plasma membrane this plasma membrane is selectively permeable in nature it does not allow all the particles to pass through it it selects the particles and then it allow only some molecules to cross it inside the cell or outside the cell the molecules can move from inside of the cell to outside and they can move from outside to inside the condition required for that is concentration gradient concentration gradient means difference in the concentration of the molecules or water this gradient can allow movement by a process called diffusion you have studied diffusion in class 8 what is this diffusion it is movement of molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration what is this here this is the plasma membrane and you can see say these are oxygen molecules and these are carbon dioxide molecules and if we take this as inside of a cell and this is outside the cell so here the molecules will move from let us see carbon dioxide molecules the blue ones how many of them are there they are yes 10 so the concentration of carbon dioxide molecules is higher here and it is lower here let us see where will they move they are crossing the membrane and they are coming towards the lower concentration this is the process of diffusion where the molecules move from their higher concentration to lower concentration which molecules can move by diffusion they are usually oxygen and carbon dioxide oxygen moves inside the cell because the concentration of oxygen is higher outside the cell and carbon dioxide move from inside to outside the cell so this movement is defined as diffusion these uh, molecules move from the higher concentration to the lower concentration another process which takes place through the plasma membrane is osmosis osmosis is actually a special type of diffusion why do we call it a special type because it involves movement of water molecules in diffusion we saw movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide but here this is movement of osmosis refers to movement of water molecules from higher concentration of water molecule to lower concentration of water molecules you can see here the water molecules blue in color they have a higher concentration here and they have a lower concentration here so where will they move they will move from higher to lower just have a look the molecules are moving till the movement is similar on both the sides define as it is the movement of what yes it is movement of water movement of water and movement of water from the region of high concentration of water to the region of low concentration of water but the basic condition required is it is through a plasma membrane or a semi permeable membrane why we are using a semi permeable membrane board here we can demonstrate plus osmosis outside and when we use a semi permeable membrane we can use um egg membrane or the membrane of tomato or a cellophane membrane these allow osmosis so 
as osmosis can be defined as a special case of diffusion because it does not involve the molecules of gas or the solids but it involves the molecules of water. Now if we place a cell in hypotonic solution, this is a cell, this cell is the This one cell has a cell wall around it. Now when this is placed in a hypotonic see the concentration of uh, the solution is about 5 percent in the cell cannot have to exclude the cell in the cell the cell can hardly be found in the cell so the constant percent is inside the cell and outside it is solid so the concentration Solicity is for concentration. So, if a cell is placed in high concentration of solution, we say that cell is placed in a hypotonic solution. So, what will happen? The water will move from inside of the cell to outside. Why? Here the water molecules are higher and here the water molecules are less. So, the movement of molecules will be from inside the cell to outside the cell and as all the water is moved out the plasma membrane shrinks remember in a plant cell the cell wall has not shrunk what has shrunk is the plasma membrane this condition of a plant cell can be termed as plasma lysis this is a blood cell if you place the blood cell in hypertonic solution, this blood cell does not have a cell wall, so this will shrink. Another condition is of a living cell. You can observe that these cells, you can observe it under the microscope. If you place it in hypertonic solution, the colored plasma membrane shrinks to a size of a cell. This is a practical we can perform in the lab. Now, if we place the cell in hypotonic solution, hypotonic solution means the concentration inside the cell, the water concentration inside the cell is uh, the movement of molecules of water is inside the cell because the cell is absorbing water so when we say cell is placed in hypotonic solution it is going to absorb water by the process of we could call this process as endosmosis now when the cell has lot of water what will happen to the cell of course it will swell when you water the plant which you built in this scorching heat you will see that all the leaves come back to their shape. That is due to endosmosis. Let's have a look of endosmosis in the cells in the lab. See how gradually they are absorbing water and going back to the shape back. This is the plasma membrane which is going back. The cell wall remains at the same place. The third condition is that when the cell is placed in isotonic solution. Iso means same, tonicity is concentration. So there is no net loss or gain or no net movement of molecules. The shape of the cell will remain similar. Let us recap it. For isotonic, the shape remains the same. The shape of the cell is same. But in hypotonic, this also has swollen and this also has swollen. In hypertonic solution, the animal cell will shrink and the plant cell plasma membrane will shrink. Can you see this in uh, real life? Can you quote some examples from real life? Yes, all of you eat salad and when salad is sprinkled with salt. So, if you sprinkle salt on salad, water comes out some juicy material comes out from the cucumber tomato this is the example of 
hypertonic solution. Another example, if you take a dried vegetable or say a sprinkled brin brinjal with, and place it in water, it will swell up. This is due to endoosmosis. If you take raisins and dried raisins and place them in water, they will swell up. These are the examples from daily life. If you have observed your mother preparing vegetables and if she is preparing leafy vegetable in the pan and as soon as she adds salt to this leafy vegetable, immediately some water comes out. That is due to exoosmosis. Here it is exoosmosis, here it is endoosmosis and endoosmosis, this is exoosmosis. We should take examples from daily life. Next, the nucleus. We saw three basic structures. The third one is the nucleus. This is centrally located dense part and this nucleus also has a plasma membrane which we call as the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. But there is not a single layer of this nuclear membrane. There are two layers of this nuclear membrane. And this membrane is disturbed by these pores. So we say that in a nucleus, there are nuclear pores. The plasma membrane is, there are two layers of plasma membrane, inner and outer. And there are nuclear pores inside this nucleus is a thread-like structure which we call it as the chromatin thread and this nucleus also has some dense part which is termed as the nucleolus. So this nucleus is, plays a very vital role for a cell. Why? Because it contains very important material the chromatin thread. Can you tell what is this chromatin thread made up of? This chromatin thread is made up of DNA. It is deoxyribose nucleic acid. It is a molecule, of course, as the name signifies nucleic acid. So it is a big molecule. Chromatin thread you can see is entangled here. It's not arranged. So this type of nucleus is seen in a non-dividing cells. By the end of this chapter, you will so see that cells divide. So when the cell is not dividing or when the cell is at rest. So this structure is seen when the cell is at rest. But this structure coils and condenses around some small proteins. These are the shiny pearl-like structures are histone proteins. So the DNA coils around this histone protein and then after thick coiling and condensation, they take up a shape of these structure which are, yes, they are chromosomes. So this is a thick chromosome but you cannot see this thick chromosome in a non-dividing cell. For this, it is seen in a dividing cell. So chromosome is visible only in a dividing cell. But when the cell is at rest, you will see the chromatin thread. But when the cell is dividing, you will see thick chromosomes. This nucleus, it plays a very vital role in the life of a cell. First of all, it has the DNA. This is the genetic material which transmits the characters from parents to offsprings. And other role of this nucleus is that it control all the activities of the cell. Let's recap about the nucleus. What is it covered with? It is covered with the nuclear membrane. And the nuclear membrane is disturbed by the nuclear pores. What is the role of these pores? They may allow movement of substances. Again, they allow the movement of some molecules like RNA. Then, these chromosomes 
throughout a bird sheet that is busy in the nucleus and they are having the genetic information. The DNA is the very important molecule and DNA reaction is made for disease and many things. And the basis of the nucleus is categorized by the doesn't mean that it is thousand years old. Ancient means it has the old design. You call it old fashioned. So when it has an old ancient design, that type of cell is a prokaryotic cell. But if it has some complex structures, like you have a new mobile nowadays with complex structures, so this eukaryotic cell. Now this cell does not mean a mobile phone here. Yeah? eukaryotic cell and prokaryotic cells. This is a prokaryotic cell. It is a typical prokaryotic cells can be seen in bacteria and blue-green algae or they can be called as cyanobacteria. The cell here, it has a very simple structure. This is the cytoplasm. This is circular DNA and this region where this DNA is present it can be termed as a nucleus. It's not a nucleus remember. It's just a region where the DNA is present. So we call it a nucleus. This is the cytoplasm and these are ribosomes. You can see this is the ribosome. It has the cytoplasm. It has a cell membrane. This is very important. But this cell membrane is surrounded by a cell wall. This is a cell wall. This cell wall and around the cell wall is the capsule. This is the covering called capsule. So these are the basic structures, the DNA, the cell wall, the cell membrane and the capsule makes a prokaryotic cell of a bacteria or a blue green algae. Eukaryotic cells are, yes, they are very well organized animal cell and plant cell. This structure, you cannot see such a structure under a simple microscope because this is taken by electron microscope. And this is the 3D structures of an animal cell. Let us see the basic structure. Cell membrane is present here also and cell membrane is present here also. But this cell membrane is enclosed by the cell wall. Enclosed by the cell wall. And here the cell membrane is the outermost covering. This is the cytoplasm. It has a cytoplasm. This also has a cytoplasm. And this is the nucleus this complete assembly is the nucleus here the nucleus is centrally located here the nucleus is present on the side you have seen these differences of plant cell and animal cell in eighth class the rest of these are the cell organelles which we'll study about them in the coming chapters so this is about eukaryotic cell the animal cell and the plant cell. Let us compare these two cells. You should compare these cells and this is a little work for you that differentiate a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell and find out the differences in size, their nuclear region, about the chromosome and membrane bound organelles. We have seen these small structures. These are the parts of a cell. These are the, uh, this mitochondria, 
endoplasmic reticulum these are organelles you see that organelles are lacking here these organelles have specific functions inside the cell rest we'll see in the next class thank you for being a patient gsc